New day, new video. This is gonna be a new kind of ring, super easy. Only a foot of 18 gauge, one foot. There you go, that's it. Cutting that off. Come to the middle, make a loop. Make that loop tight, pull it tighter and tighter. Pull these together, make a heart. It can be a little off center. Like that, I'm banging the camera because I don't want it to be too easy. See how I pinch that? Makes it even tighter. You gotta be careful you don't slip. If you slip, you gouge the wire. You gouge the wire, you make a sharp edge, and then you gotta file it down and take some kind of marker and try to cover up your mistake or just start over. I don't like starting over. All right, so there's our cute little heart, right? Twist. Give it two twists. Bring the ends together and then we're gonna turn it on a right angle. And now we're just gonna wrap this around our finger, make it come back through the heart. Let's put that through the heart. It's gonna be sloppy at first, look at that, it's sloppy. Just get it through the heart, get it there. Sounds like some kind of medieval uh, attack method. Just get it straight through the heart. All right, now we're gonna kind of turn it like that on the side, you see that? Oh yeah. Keep coming around. Now we, once we get it close to the size of a, a finger, we put it on our ring maker and we, uh, I call it a ring maker. I don't know what this is. All I know is it's stepped. Don't get the one that's gradual. Buy the one that's stepped. This should be 10 bucks at Joanne Fabrics. And Joanne Fabrics needs to pay me for saying this, so get on them for that. Here we go. All right, uh, it's four, five, six, seven. I'm making a seven. I love making sevens. It's probably the most common size. If you go outside North America, the most common size is probably more like a six because I think it has something to do with less carb consumption. Just messing around. Don't feel bad. Your finger size really means has nothing to do with your health for most people. All right, there we go. So we come around like this, and then... Make it a little tighter. Push it from all sides on the ring maker to make sure it's taking the shape and size you want. And then from here, we could just cut, make two curly cues out of this and be done with it. But I like to slip a little stone on there, make it extra pretty. Uh, this works best with four millimeter or six millimeter stones. I'm gonna do one of each. I wanted to do four millimeter, but I can't find any that have holes that will fit 18 gauge. Four millimeter, usually the beads are only drilled to fit 20 gauge. So 18 gauge, we gotta use six millimeter beads. That's all right, it'll still look good. Here we go. Take it off the ring maker. We're gonna put one on each. Let's start with our jade here. This is a pretty stone. Can't go wrong with jade. I'm going to separate them. We're going to get this as far down. Sometimes you got to straighten it out again and wiggle it because the this is very tight and the bead doesn't want to move. So I'm going to get it as far down as I can to the base. And then I'm going to wrap the wire around it. I'm going to pull that in as tight as I can. And then with what's left, I'm gonna make a swirl. I don't even want this much. I'm gonna cut a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And bending it back this way. Pinching that tight, and then you turn it sideways and you can do this swirl. Now, you gotta grab it really tight in the first roll you gotta be careful not to slip, because the more you slip, the more you're gonna scratch off if it has a coating, or you're just gonna generally scratch it. it. Takes a lot of strength to get this going. Practice with 20 gauge or 22 gauge, it's easier. So there is our first swirl. Now we're gonna put the other stone on here. Again, get it as close to the base as you'd like closer the better. You want to pull in things tight. Beginning wire wrappers, all their stuff is flimsy and up in the air and all over the place. Pull stuff tight. The more you work on making stuff tight, the better your pieces will look and the stronger they will be. 
So there we have that. I'm going to make another loop, another uh, swirl. I'll make this swirl even smaller, kind of give it a variation from the other one. So we're going to, again, bend it in like this. Give it a little pinch carefully that we don't slip. Pull it tight. And muscle that swirl. All right, now, last thing we just need to do is position these however we like them. Again, you want it to lay flat against the finger as much as possible. You don't want these things sticking way up in the air and looking like you don't know what you're doing. And I started on a seven, but now it's starting to turn into an eight. So I decide if I want to keep it a seven or if I want to just let it be an eight. And I'll let it be an eight. I'm using this closed part of these pliers to press in. This is very careful, dangerous. If you're not careful, you can slip and stab yourself. It won't be the worst stab in the world, hopefully, because these are fairly blunt, but you can get yourself pretty good. So just go slow and carefully when you start out if you're gonna try different maneuvers like this. Even more importantly, use good body mechanics. Make sure your muscles are being used from bigger muscles, not tiny muscles, meaning come from the shoulder, come from the elbow. Try not to twist your wrist in a weird way. You hold your wrist in an uncomfortable position and put a lot of pressure on it over and over. Only takes five minutes and you're gonna have some kind of wrist issues that could last weeks. All right, so there we go. See how that looks on someone.